Welcome back, and it's time for us to take a look at the front pages of some national dailies this morning. And I begin this morning with the Punch newspaper. And the Punch newspaper leads with Governor's Battle for Battle Cash Crunch. Governor's Battle Cash Crunch. And the writers, Delta, Emo, Cross River, or your lead as states borrow 130 billion naira in three months. 17 shortfall hits. States internally generated revenue debts rise to 5.5 trillion naira. Above the masthead, you have opposition. Opposition attacks FG as presidency lambes EU poll observers. Details of that is on the inside of the Punch newspaper, page two to be precise. NLC to meet Tinubu on 65-year retirement age. NMPCL marketers fuel vessels arrive next week. That's according to Ipman. And page 21 is where you have details of that on the Punch newspaper. UTME top performer, in quote, manipulated score faces persecution. That's coming from JAM. And can mourns as kidnappers kill RS, RCCG pastor and seven church goers rescued. Can mourns as kidnappers kill RCCC uh, G pastor and seven churchgoers rescued. All right, so that's the much to be taken from the Punch newspaper. From the Punch, we move to the Nation newspaper. The Nation leads with investors 4.35 trillion naira gain in one month boosts economy. Investors 4.35 trillion naira gain in one month boosts economy. Above the masthead, you have debt toll of Nigerian pilgrims rise to 13. Banks collected 8.9 trillion naira deposits in 12 months. Details of those you find on pages 8 and 5. We're still taking a look at the front page of the Nation newspaper. And you have Presidency Rejects EU's 2023 Poll Report. And the writer there, LP OK's verdict. Chinese naval ships in Lagos. Two dead in U.S. mass shooting. And you have Ndume Bamidele bidding for Senate leader post. All right, so that's the much you'll be taking from the Nation newspaper. From the Nation there, we'll move to leadership. Leadership is leading with 2023 elections, presidency, Labour Party, CSOs differ on EU report. Page 4 is where you have details of that on leadership. And then you have weed over girls Lafia Cargo Airport taken over by FG. Weed over girls Lafia Cargo Airport taken over by FG. Subsidy savings set up six spending details. Subsidy savings set up six spending details. You have details of that of page seven on leadership newspaper. And you have Jump busts Anambra girl who forged UTME result. Page six is where details of that can be found. Above the masthead, you have KUKA tasks FG on freedom of worship. Reverend Father KUKA 
tasking the FG on freedom of worship and you have Hajj. Saudi Arabia blames logistic challenges on invaders. And from leadership, we we'll go to our last newspaper this morning, which is Nature News. Nature News is leading with 2023 flooding alert. Nimet warns of imminent danger. FCTA to demolish houses in Abuja, River State inaugurate committee, and Enugu set up task force. Those are the riders attached to that headline. 2023 flooding alert. Nimet warns of imminent danger. World Bank highlights fuel subsidies negative impact on e-mobility in Nigeria. You have Plateau State government cracks down on pollution, introduces mobile courts for sanitation offenders. Page 17 is where details of that can be found on Nature News. All right, well, that's the much I'll be taking from the front page of the Nature News. And I have been joined by our guest and of the press, Mohammed Abdullahi, public affairs analyst, joining us from Niger State. Good morning to you, Mohammed. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning, Nigerians. Good to have you join us. So let's start with this report from the EU on the 2023 elections. Presidency, Labour Party, CSOs differ on EU. Of course, President Tinubu's gov government has kicked against this report. Um, but let's have your take on this headline. Yes, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's actually a two-way thing. Definitely the, I mean, the winning party or the ruling party, if you allow me to say that, the APC will feel the EU report uh, it's not accurate because it's uh, it's it's kind of uh, tainted the image of the election. I mean, all the positives of the election with the report of the EU, it seems uh, the victory for APC is tainted with uh, skirmishes, inadequacies by INEC and even inefficiencies by the umpire. So I understand uh, when the APC uh, led government had to refute that report and say it is uh, it is unacceptable. But again, on the side of the oppositions, particularly from the Labour Party, I know there is, 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 is a kind of report that they will be happy about because it's clamors and uh, support uh, what they've been fighting for. I mean, uh, all the while, whether on social media, on uh, news pages, and even in the court. So like I mentioned earlier, is a two-way thing. Depends on which side of the coin uh, one find him or herself. Uh, then uh, the EU report either makes sense or not. But if you want my honest opinion, mm. uh, I think uh, I will I, 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 I will say to a larger extent the the EU also have uh, they made a they made a good point. But um, it doesn't in any way uh, outrightly. Uh, I mean. Uh, say the election uh, wasn't uh, conducted a bit freely. Uh, like, uh, if you allow me, there are so many instances, uh, examples of uh, things that happened during the election that will say, okay, to some extent, uh, the, the, the will of Nigerians were, I mean, allowed to prevail. But uh, in other instances as well, uh, people are well on their right to register their grievances in terms of the conduct of INEC, I mean, statutorily, uh, the fact that INEC promised Nigerians to say results will be uploaded, I mean, on the real time. It, it didn't happen during the presidential election. And there were so many reports across the country of violence here and there, mm -hmm. as well as the late arrivals of materials, and probably to some extent, a uh, kind of coordinated uh, attack on some particular areas to prevent uh, a vote uh, allegedly uh, supporting uh, some political parties, probably opposition or what have you. So, but by and large, I think to some uh, extent, uh, the EU report is not far from the from the truth, but again, is not the whole truth. So, like I said earlier, it depends on which side of the divide uh, one finds himself to either accept or reject the report. 
All right. So um, the writers there, let us breathe, presidency tells EU observers. Over 1,000 petitions suggest poor conduct, CSOs, and you are just saving your face, LP fires back, and then the court will decide, says IPAC. So indeed, the court will decide. The EU's report you know, highlighted some key areas, especially six of them uh, that need to be looked into. But uh, as IPAC has said, the courts will decide, and we're indeed waiting, Nigerians are indeed waiting, the international community waiting to see what the court is going to say uh, from all that we saw happen at the election tribunal. All right, so let's move forward to another story that's quite catchy here. Jam busts Anambra girl who forged UTME result. It's, it's quite unfortunate <clears throat> that uh, a, a girl of less than 15 years, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm 17, correct, from uh, what I saw, 17. Yeah, yeah okay. We was celebrated across the nation as maybe, you know, uh, having registered a very high score in Jam. In fact, I, I, I know of uh, either some philanthropists or corporate organizations that have even paid uh, as high as a scholarship of about three million or so, uh, you know, to support the, the said candidate only for Jam to announce yesterday that uh, that was not the original score. That score was manipulated. But again, it tells a lot about uh, even our corporate organizations in, you know, giving out scholarship and so on and so forth. Even the press themselves, seriously. Because I, I expect, or one would expect that, uh, you know, stories are verified before it is either published or broadcast, you know? So uh, it means, you know, what we see on social media or what someone just see, it, I think it's as simple as if this uh, candidate in question says, I have scored 362, it behoves on the press to actually confirm with jump before going to press. But I think none of, the, none of that happened. Everyone just flew with uh, the, what's it called, the result presented by the candidate, and it was all over the news only uh, for several weeks, only for the, you know, the authority itself, I mean, JAM, to issue a statement yesterday that that wasn't the actual score. So it's, it's shocking. And it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's shocking that um, 18... I don't want to believe maybe this candidate in question will be the particular person that have altered this score. Probably there might be a probably a family member or friends around. I I, I don't want to insinuate, but I, I'm very skeptical to think that particular candidate, that lady, that young girl, will have the courage to do to to commit such anomaly. So I think a proper investigation is is uh, needed to be carried out. And all those uh, involved needed to be real, to be prosecuted and, and punished for such offense. But again, I think it behoves on our media, on the press, and even our corporate organizations, before flying with any story, issuing sponsorship statement here and there, to verify the authenticity of such news before uh, going forward is important. Lots of questions, really. Uh, Mohammed. first of all, it was the chairman of Innocent Motors that gave her that scholarship of three million naira. And then Anambra State wanted to give her some special recognition. But it was at the point of giving her that recognition that top members of the Ministry of Education in Anambra State decided to verify with JAM first. And it was at that okay. point that the truth came out that the girl mm -hmm. indeed did not score up to 300 and whatever it was she said she, was, she yeah. scored. Yeah. And, and, and so obviously she used an app to uh, change her grades. Then yeah. the question now is, how is that even possible? What happened to security of the JAMP uh, app? Why is it that this little girl was able to manipulate JAMP to the extent that she did? If you remember, there was a case of a girl in Kaduna State also that uh, claimed she had 380. And mm -hmm. members of her community uh, were calling on JAM to give her a special recognition for such, you know, great result. And then JAM investigated and discovered that that girl did not only 
not score that great, but she never even registered for JAM in the no first point. place. So that raises <laughs> lots of questions. How easy is yeah. it and why is it so easy to manipulate JAM results, to get to their system and change stuff? No, I don't think it's about getting into their system. It's, I think it's about uh, different uh, uh, apps on display uh, uh, all over the internet where you can create whatsoever you like. Mm. Remember, you can just you can you can pick up even even I'm very sure uh, even roadside uh, uh, what's it called designers can design the app logo perfectly and design the uh, the, the the jam result perfectly for you to impute whatever score you want. So I don't think it's actually infiltrating into the Jamba site. I think it's, it's, it's just uh, some other mechanisms uh, which are very abundant on the internet mm. that you can actually use to, you know, to manipulate uh, figures. I want to believe that is it. It's not actually infiltrating into the Jamba mm -hmm. servers. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah but that, that's something to really... It's, it's something to really... Uh, think about as a people uh, to have mm. a girl that young uh, do something that serious is something that we should really consider. It's, it's, it's I mean, because we're looking at the, <laughs> the future, we're talking about yeah. the future, talking about the leaders of tomorrow, talking about the quality of education and to think that this kind of a thing is possible. And then you, you wonder those results that they manipulate. If they took mm. them to the universities, the various schools where they would go to seek for admission, is that what they mm. would see? Or would they be seeing uh, the one, the script from JAM? One wouldn't I, know. I know, I, know, I know for sure that JAM sends every result, every result, every year's annual result to the various schools. It might take time. Yes, what you present at the initial stage is what the school you are, uh, you know, you want to get admission into work with. But I want to uh, assure Nigerians that, you know, this could also verify. It takes time anyway. Sometimes mm. you might even get the admission uh, initially, and then probably at the second year or third year, even the final year, we have people who have been, you know, rusticated due to exam practices and then result falsification at their final year, which is even more painful. You know, paid school fee for one, two, three, four year, yeah. and you think you are a student. But at the final year, uh, when probably the school must have carried out its full investigation, they discovered that your jam result is fake and you are rusticated. So we've had cases like that all over Nigerian universities. So uh, I don't think it's a thing of fear. Nigerian universities are not that terrible. Uh, they carry out verification of results, to the best of my knowledge. That's quite reassuring. Well, the jam has said that she will be persecuted. And um, she is 17, so let's see what they will do uh, about it. Some are even saying that um, tech companies should look into such girls. Uh, oh. <laughs> they are sharp <laughs> enough to carry out such tricks that tech companies should look into them and see what they can do with their intelligence. In quotes. I don't think they did that alone. I said it earlier. I don't, I yes. don't want to believe that. It must be like a cartel of other family, friends, and so on. I think a proper investigation will or should unravel that. Yes. Okay, so let's move forward to a headline on the Punch newspaper. Uh, in fact, that's the lead headline on the Punch. Governor's battle cash crunch. Delta, Emo, Cross River, or your lead as states borrow 130 billion naira in three months. Some of these yeah, governors yeah. met empty treasuries. That now they are struggling. Mm, yeah, definitely. You know, we just conducted elections, and uh, the governors are barely one year in. Uh, sorry, one month in office, and most of uh, our 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 kind of uh, governance system, if I'm not mistaken, uh, when the outgoing governor is leaving uh, and is uh, entering, they they, they 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 take away allegedly take away almost everything from the treasury, including state properties, even cars. They are very shameless that they take away even state properties, cars, and so on and so forth. So the incoming government, particularly with an op opposition, is left with almost nothing, you know, to start with. So it becomes very, very difficult for the incoming government to, to start, you know, to, to begin business. And I'm not surprised seeing that headline because, uh, in fact, it's 
I'm very sure it's what is happening almost across the states in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Empty treasuries, except those governors who are, you know, continuing their second term. Uh, most of the new governments and new governors will find it very, very difficult to, to stand on their feet, particularly at these initial stages. You know, they need to uh, quickly find ways, probably through IGRs, increase of IGR, and then uh, and you, under, you also want to understand that, you know, the, the allocation for federal government uh, is actually not enough, you know. So uh, they have to find ways. Probably some people, some of the governors might even start borrowing at this initial stage, just like the headline says. They uh, started borrowing already. Them. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's quite unfortunate is the fact that governance is not a continuum in Nigeria. We just say it on paper and we read it on paper that governance is continuum. But in Nigeria, seriously, it's a different kettle of fish. Uh, so it's quite unfortunate. But I'm sure uh, probably in the next two, three, four months, these governors must have settled down and then they will find a way or ways of cushioning this effect of uh, uh, lack of continuity in government that uh, the previous government left behind. And sadly, as long as the trend continues, you know, where governors, former governors, end up in the Senate and not in prison where they should be cooling their feet, these kind of things will continue. They come, mess up the whole state, steal as much as they can, borrow as much as they can. I mean, towards the end of last administration, of the last administration, we saw governors who were borrowing even in the last week of their yes, tenure. Yes. They were borrowing yeah. money, borrow this money, steal these monies, and then leave, and nothing is done. And some who may eventually get invited uh, will probably get some sort of plea bargain, and then that's the end of the story. And tomorrow you look at the chambers, you know, the National Assembly, you see them there as your lawmakers. It's, it's quite unfortunate, seriously. It's, it's, it's the reality of Nigeria. You know, I, I, I was speaking to a friend earlier, and I was, uh, my, my, my argument was, where is, is there any unwritten law in Nigeria that even prevents uh, top leaders to be invited, you know, to, you know, to, to, to present and talk about, and, and to be accountable to Nigerians, from the presidency to as governors and so on and so forth? Is that, where is the unwritten law in Nigeria that says these people cannot be accountable for what they did? Remember, for instance, in Sanfara, in fact, it has to take the present government which, who, is a, who is from PDP, to ask the security forces to, you know, scale the fence, forcefully break into the house of the ex-governor to retrieve cars that were bought by the government, by the, by the by Zanfara state government money, mm -hmm. you know, which were allegedly taken away by the ex-governor. So it is so unfortunate. Things that are meant to serve the public, I mean, that were, that, 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 you know, that were bought with public money, these governors, as they are living, they freely take them away. Not even monies now, even properties, mm -hmm. air conditioners, you know, beddings, and so on. It's so, like, it's so shameless. It is. And like you already said, these guys retire into the Senate chamber, which means no one can prosecute them. They have that immunity. And then life goes on. The public keeps suffering, and then the new government begins to look for ways, look for funding, to buy even furnishing in the government house. You have to furnish everything anew, as if uh, we are just starting up. Uh, is, is it not so unfortunate that in Nigerian budget, for instance, we are not digressing, but we, in Nigerian budget, for instance, every year we still make room for cutleries mm -hmm. in the presidency. Yeah. Humongous every, sums. Budget, Humongous year. amounts. Yes, we, we, are, we allocate humongous amount annually to buy cutleries, pots, spoons in the presidency. So what happens to the one bought last year? Someone has scattered away with them also. So it's so unfortunate that we live in such kind of uh, society where governance is not a continuum. Everyone that gets into the position of power allegedly, allegedly feels there's an opportunity to enrich himself and his family. It's so unfortunate. I think uh, we can't continue this way. We, 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 we need to change, and uh, we need to change fast. All right, let's move forward. Um, uh, let's go to leadership newspaper. Uh, above the masthead, we have Kuka tasks FG on freedom of worship. Yeah, I think it's important. It's a, it's a constitutional right for you and I to freely associate uh, 
with uh, whatever religion that we feel, whether Christianity, Islam, traditional worship, what Buddhism, you can name them. So I think it's also very important that uh, this constitutional right is upheld so that we have a free society where people have uh, that right respected. But again, it's also important that uh, as we seek that right, we also understand the, our responsibility as citizens also. You know, you can't say because you want to freely uh, practice your religion, whether Islam or Christianity or what have you, and then you infringe on the right of other people, because that's what is, uh, that's what is very prevalent, you know, among people. Yes, since I have the right, for instance, to practice my religion, I can go overboard to also infringe upon the right of other people. No, mm. I think it's important that whereas Nigerians have that, understand that, yes, we have that right to practice uh, our religion, we should also understand that we have the responsibility to be civil. We have the responsibility to make sure that our country is in order and in peace and in unity, mm -hmm. uh, irrespective of our religion. So in as much as we understand these two tenets, uh, I think we will be able to scale through and live peacefully. But in as much, uh, in the sense that we, uh, we, we want to think our religion is above others or we have our right is more than the right of others in terms of religious practice. That might cause a whole lot of problems, uh, you know? So I think it's important, like I said earlier, uh, this constitutional right should be respected, should be upheld, but at the same time, the citizens should know that where there is this right, there's also duties for us to protect and not infringe upon the right of others. Indeed, indeed. Well, uh, still on the leadership, there is, uh, a sub-headline there, subsidy savings, set up six spending details. Of course, in a situation where there is no trust, it is necessary. With the kind of uh, corruption we've seen and the situation Nigerians are facing, the high level of inflation, indeed, it is in place to ask for a breakdown of how uh, that money is spent. Money is spent. Yes, it's... It's, it's more than a month now since, uh, I mean, almost a month or so, or even more than, that we talk about uh, the removal of subsidy and so on, even though there's a whole lot of debate upon it. Because, uh, seriously, the, the untold hardship uh, across Nigeria and, you know, that Nigerians are passing through is unimaginable, mm -hmm. uh, which behoves the debate that, you know, whether it was right or not to actually even remove the subsidy. Because I've seen this argument everywhere. Uh, you know, you, you can't say because you have a headache, for instance, and then you cut off the head. Mm. Uh, I think the, the most efficient thing to do is to actually look for uh, painkillers and things that will relieve you of the headache rather than removing the head entirely. So what the government, I think government is, is in Nigeria, is actually, they're actually running away from their responsibilities. Because if you look at the subsidy itself, for instance, you know, this, this, it is, the, the, the major issue is corruption. Mm -hmm. And who says that even removing the, 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 the subsidy, the money saved, for instance, just like what Serap is asking for, will not be looted? You know? Mm -hmm. So why not close the loopholes? For instance, we as a country don't even know the exact amount of PMS, I mean fuel, we use. That's, that's government duty. We need to ascertain. We need to know. We don't. We pay people invoices for importing fuel into Nigeria while they don't. It's also the, go, the job of government to arrest such situation. You know, that's not a subsidy issue. You know, so while we are trying to cut off the head rather than, you know, look for better solutions, uh, uh, we, we should understand that the major problem uh, is corruption. So whichever, you, whichever way you try to, to, to uh, the government is trying to move across, these corrupt practices is also bound to happen, if not checkmated. So I, 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 I quite uh, agree with Sarah that government particularly should look for a platform, whether through the press and so on, something uh, just like what the previous government was doing. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, the Jonathan government before he left office, if I, if I could remember, hmm. uh, was trying to, uh, you know, try to publish I think every month the, uh, the allocations to state so that people will see physically what your state is in. I think it's also important that at this juncture, this new government 
since the removal of subsidies should look for a platform like that to publish exactly what Nigerians have been saving, uh, what Nigeria has saved maybe in a particular month or in a particular quarter in terms of subsidy, and then publish to tell Nigerians what those savings were used for. I think that will go a long way to make it accountable and make Nigerians understand uh, what the savings of subsidy is used for, like uh, what Serap is, uh, is, asking, is asking for. Indeed, uh, Ngozi Okonjo Wale, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Wale, back then during uh, uh, her time as finance minister, did publish the allo allocations to states and and was inviting people, Nigerians, to mm. challenge their governors, ask them questions mm. on how these monies were spent. Uh, how mm. far did Nigerians go in responding to that is another question. But now that Nigeria is being ranked as uh, home to a large share of uh, global extreme poor, and uh, Perhaps now Nigerians will begin to ask the right questions and begin, and begin to take their destinies in their own hands and not allow these so-called political leaders um, eat them dry, as we are saying. Yes, yeah, it all boils down to accountability. Uh, it's, uh, and, and then Nigerians actually demanding for that accountability because I, I'm sure it will not be given on a platter of gold. We as Nigerians need to demand. Uh, like I said earlier, it behoves uh, on the new government uh, to make sure that it deals uh, with Nigerians in an accountable manner, you know, very open in whatsoever policies, particularly in terms of finances. Uh, uh, for instance, it was, a, it was a trending issue almost two weeks ago when the revenue mobilization, whatever, you know, came up with the idea to say, um, Yes, I think it's possible to increase the allowances, I mean, or the salaries of uh, public office holders. And Nigerians vehemently uh, said, no, you can't do this while we are suffering. Why the government is asking us to adjust and readjust. And the agency systematically, you know, withdrew uh, that. Even the presidency says, no, we are not giving any go ahead uh, with regards to that. So in such manner, that is the kind of manner that you want this new government and new administration to approach issues to be very, very emphatic, to be very, very, you know, accountable in whatsoever dealings uh, they are having, whether in terms of policies, in terms of finances, make sure it is something that is very visible. Make sure that it is something that Nigerians can see and Nigerians can relate with. Because it's, 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 uh, it's, not, it's not fair enough for the leaders at all times to ask citizens to sacrifice why, you know, the leaders, you know, are you know are, are spending or you know wallowing in opulence. I think is 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 not a good idea. So, like you rightly mentioned, the government, if it wants ac acceptability of Nigerians, must make sure it deals with Nigerians in an accountable manner in all fronts and facets. Well, let's before we go, let's look at this story on Nature News: 2023 flooding a lot. Nimet warns of imminent danger and then FCTA to demolish houses in Abuja. You're up in the north there. Tell us, were you in Abuja when the last flooding took place? We saw some horrible videos and pictures there. Uh, were you in Abuja? Did you see? What, did you, what do you know about that, that flooding? Yes, uh, well, unfortunately, unfortunately, I was around Abuja during the flooding and the uh, trade mall. It's actually a trade mall. It's called Trade Mall Estate uh, uh, in Lube. Uh, it was actually devastating. Uh, but again, I, 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 I say it every time. We, when, we, when, when we fail to plan, we actually are planning to fail uh, because you know, this estate, I don't know whether it covered uh, the FCTAs uh, or FCDAs approval, but, uh, you know, people should have known that that is a water channel. In fact, because all of the estate was actually submerged mm -hmm. by, 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 by flooding. So it should have been, it, it, the warning should have been there, but again, the approval shouldn't have come because you know or the authority should have understand or know that that particular area is waterlogged and is a water channel, you know? 
So well, unfortunately, we have lost lives, we have lost properties. It's important that we plan ahead. So it's a good, uh, it is a good thing that Nimet is actually making the warning. I mean, issuing out a lot, issuing out warning, and uh, making sure that people uh, understand these warnings and a lot. But again, it shouldn't even, it shouldn't just stop there. I'm sure there are uh, uh, government agencies in various states that are responsible. I mean, uh, maybe NEMA or whatsoever, uh, in various uh, states that are responsible for making sure that uh, uh, people see this. Even the National Orientation Agency, yes, you know, I think they should amplify this campaign mm -hmm. so that whether on radio, TV, newspapers, and even social media, that people get this and see the imminent danger staying where uh, is prone to, to flooding. Because seriously, the, 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 the situation that happened in Abuja two weeks ago was actually avoidable. Yeah, very avoidable. Unfortunately, like I said, we've lost lives, we've lost property, and it, we shouldn't allow that to occur. But remember, it's not just the first time. Even last year, we had it all over Nigeria. We lost several lives, several lives, mm -hmm. billions of pro billions worth of properties, farmlands, and so on and so forth. So what are we doing to make sure that uh, 2023 or 2024 is not a repeat of 2022? It behoves of all the agencies and even the citizenry to make sure that wherever you are is not prone to flooding. If you are, it's your responsibility and prerogative to understand that you need to leave seriously because nothing is worth uh, one's life. No matter your investment, you need to leave. And then, like I said earlier, the, 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 the agencies of government need to amplify all this campaign. It shouldn't be just name it alone. The National Heritage Agency should take it different languages, you know, the, you know, different Nigerian languages should amplify this campaign so that we, because we're in the winter, we're in the rainy season in Nigeria. Yeah. Nimet and, gives uh, these warnings every year. Nimet gives these warnings every year. The headlines here, this, the writer saying River State Inaugurates Committee, Enugu State mm -hmm. Setup Task Force. But you see, this, what happened to ecological funds? Nimet raises these alarms every year. Every year they give this alert. But we see this flooding come up year in, year out, kill people, destroy property. You wonder why the states would not take those warnings seriously. Why any governor who knows what he's coming there to do will not make it top priority to see to it that each year nothing like flooding happens in the state. Is it a way of siphoning funds too? Perhaps. Who knows? Because sometimes but they allow you know, for tragedies to come up so that they can use it as a means of siphoning funds. Okay, that is, is also possible uh, with, with the Nigeria, with allegedly, it's also possible. But I, I, my take is the fact that, you know, flooding is a natural disaster. So no matter how prepared you are, no matter, to, to, to a larger extent, no matter how prepared you are, sometimes it's beyond the preparation. It's something that is not easily predictable. Yes, you know, Nimet can try to say, okay, yeah, it might get to this extent, but sometimes it's even above or below. So I think the best option, the very best option, like I said, is to allow these government agencies amplify these warnings. Various Nigerian languages, not many people watch TV or even read the newspapers or even radio, mm -hmm. but probably the lo our local dialect, you know, officers going around. We all we know all these uh, riverine areas. Places that are prone to flooding across Nigeria, we know them. Seriously, agencies know them. Mm -hmm. They should go there and provide these messages and evacuate people before it is too late. Make it tell people that they need to leave before it's too late. Show samples to people. And I'm sure no one wants to lose his or her life uh, safeguarding any kind of property. So I think that is just the best option because it is very unpredictable. Nature is unpredictable. All over the world, we still have flooding. Even the US. Yeah, definitely. We still have flooding. Yeah. But some of them, as you alluded to, um, are actually avoidable. The ministries mm. of environment should be, you know, up and doing to ensure okay. that yeah. those who shouldn't be occupy certain places are not occupying them, uh, that the canals, the drainages, the drainage systems are all well put in place and cleaned up and all of that so that mm. the avoidable ones can be avoided. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much, Mohammed. Mohammed Abdullahi, public relations analyst has joined us on Up the Press all the way from Niger State. Thank you again. So we'll be back in a moment to give you our very first hot topic. Do stay with us.